MacBook Air, what are you doing here? We should stick around and find out. Okay. Since Microsoft began selling Surface hardware years ago, its customers have hoped for one thing above all else, a Surface laptop. Now, Microsoft has delivered. The Surface laptop is a laptop and only a laptop. There's no kickstand, the keyboard doesn't detach, and the display won't turn into a tablet. This is the standard laptop form factor that has stood the test of time. Remember our friend from the top of the video? Well, the Surface Laptop bears a striking resemblance to the MacBook Air. Every aspect of the hardware design from the aluminum wedge-shaped enclosure to the chiclet-style keyboard inside is obviously inspired by Apple's design. But the result isn't a boring knockoff. It's a gorgeous, solid, modern laptop that had me questioning how attached I really am to the MacBook Pro I use every day. In a lot of ways, this is a laptop that Apple should have made updating their ancient MacBook Air line, which was so popular with students and casual users, instead of pushing them to choose between an underpowered MacBook or a more expensive MacBook Pro. The model I'm reviewing has an i5 processor, 256 gigabyte SSD, and eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, this model is currently priced at 1299 US or 1649 Canadian. It's so well built uh, with tolerances and build quality that only Apple can match. The aluminum's precisely machined and assembled. Uh, there's only the smallest amount of flex in one or two spots, but you have to go looking for it. At 2.76 pounds, this is a really light computer, weighing less than the 13-inch MacBook Pro at 3.02 pounds, the MacBook Air at uh, 2.96 pounds, and the touchscreen Dell XPS 13 at 2.9 pounds. The beveled edges and the taper mean it's comfortable to hold, and it seems thinner than it actually is. The lid opens easily with one hand. When you open it, the first thing you're gonna notice is the fabric top case. It's called Alcantara, and you might have seen it before in a car interior or on the detachable Surface Pro keyboard. I love this stuff. It feels so much nicer underneath my wrists than aluminum, and it doesn't get uncomfortably hot the way metal does. It's designed to be durable and stain resistant, but it's an open question how it'll look in a few years after constantly rubbing up against sweaty human skin. If you ask people who've owned Surface Pros for a few years, their keyboards are either uh, clean as the day they first bought them or a greasy, oily mess. The problem is that the top case on the Surface laptop isn't replaceable, so durability is really important. Hopefully, Microsoft's taken this into account in making the fabrics as stain resistant as possible, but we won't know until further down the line. The 13 and a half inch touchscreen is bright and crisp with great contrast and viewing angles, though it seems a bit warm to me. It has a resolution of 2256 by 1504, which is an aspect ratio of three to two, which provides more vertical space than 16 to nine or 16 to 10 screens, which are used on most other laptops. The additional vertical space is great for productivity tasks, but you're gonna see black bars when watching movies. The touchscreen works as expected, uh, there's a solid hinge, but there, there's still some screen wobble. I didn't test the Surface Pen, but the utility is limited uh, as the angle makes it awkward for writing or drawing. The keyboard is excellent. It's simple and straightforward, key placement makes sense, and there's a helpful function lock key. Coming from a MacBook Pro with its butterfly keyboard, I'm reminded how much I miss real key travel. The keys are quiet, uh, they have no wobble, and they depress evenly. There's also a backlight, and the brightness can be set in a number of different levels. The Surface Laptop uses a Microsoft Precision trackpad. This is one of the best trackpads you can get on a PC laptop. Still, PC trackpads being mostly terrible, that's not exactly a high bar to meet. I found it wasn't as responsive as what you're going to find on a MacBook, and it would occasionally miss some of my gestures. The click, on the other hand, is satisfying and consistent. Overall, it's a good trackpad and it shouldn't slow you down. Let's talk connectivity. The Surface Laptop's selection of ports is weak. Along the left side, you'll find a single USB 3.1 port, a mini display port for connecting external monitors, and a headphone jack. And that's it. On the right side is the Surface connector for power, and well, that thing is great. It's everything I miss about the now defunct Apple MagSafe connector. What's missing is USB-C or Thunderbolt, 
which are the high-speed connectors that are slowly but surely becoming standard across the PC industry. The lack of USB-C isn't a problem right now, but you'll start feeling it next year, and it'll become a real annoyance near the end of the laptop's three or four year lifespan. The laptop has an AC wireless chip and Bluetooth 4.1. Speaker volume is great, but there isn't a lot of low end. Battery life is good, but not excellent. It lasted four hours and 59 minutes on a battery rundown test that cycles through web browsing, productivity tasks, photo editing, and video conferencing. That benchmark's useful for comparing different laptops, but you'll get a lot more battery life day to day, especially if you're just surfing the web or doing basic productivity tasks, something in the range of six to eight hours. As for Microsoft, they say the battery will last 14 hours, and you can get close to that, but just if you're looping video, and nothing else. The model I reviewed had a Core i5-7200U, which is a seventh generation Kaby Lake processor that runs at two and a half gigahertz. Its Geekbench score was 7522, and its PC Mark 10 score was 2949, which puts it on par with an XBD S13, for example. More detailed benchmarks are available in the video description below, by the way. For graphics, you get an integrated Intel HD 620, which isn't really a chip made for gaming. Only the least demanding games are going to be playable and only at the lowest settings. Specific graphics benchmarks are also available in the video description below. The Intel Iris Pro Graphics 640, which is available on the i7 model, offers more acceptable performance at lower settings. The 256GB PCIe NVMe SSD has a sequential write speed of 894 MB per second and a sequential read of 525, which is pretty slow. You probably won't notice it in day-to-day -day use, but those numbers are a few hundred megabytes per second slower than almost every other laptop in this category. The Surface Laptop comes out of the box with Windows 10 S, which is a variant of Windows 10. The first thing you're going to want to do if you buy this thing, though, is upgrade to Windows 10 Pro. Luckily, that's a free upgrade until the end of March 2018. The reason you want to do that is because this is a great piece of hardware but with Windows 10 S, it's locked down in so many ways. You can't install any other browser. You can't change the default search engine from Bing, and you can't install any programs that you don't download from the Windows Store. All the major applications are available on the Windows Store, but so many of the smaller, useful pieces of software and utilities that make Windows attractive in the first place aren't. Microsoft should just sell Windows 10 S to institutional clients and leave regular Windows 10 for consumers. Windows 10 S is supposed to be safer and more stable, and it may very well prove to be that, and it's supposed to have better battery life, but that doesn't appear to be the case. In any case, Windows 10 S is so limited that you should just go ahead and upgrade and don't look back. You can probably tell by now, I'm pretty impressed with this solid little machine. It's such a nice piece of hardware to look at, and to hold, and to use. It kind of made me happy each time I opened the lid. I only have a few criticisms. First, the ports. There are too few and they're kind of stuck in the past. Second, the trackpad. It's the best of the bunch, but it's still not as good as I'd like. Third, SSD performance is slower than it should be. And fourth, it ships with Windows 10 S. That's it though. Every other aspect of this computer is solid. So should you buy it? Well, that depends on whether you're buying for right now or for the future. If you want something that works great today, then this is a solid buy that you'll be super happy with. If you want something future-proof, on the other hand, you might want to look elsewhere. Well, that's it for this review. If you like this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and share. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.